Now, in total contrast to the last demonstration I did, what I'd like to do to finish off here now is to do another brief painting, but this time, instead of with the sun behind me in the snow, this time the sun is going to be right in front of me, so I'm going to do this view here. And so the effect is going to be quite different, and when the sun is out, there's going to be some interesting shadows coming into the foreground here with little sparkles of light coming through it as well. Not a lot of colour. It's about light and dark and subtlety of colour, particularly in the shadows. So I've got one more canvas here, which I'm going to use for this little demonstration. OK, I've got the basics down here. Um, the sun has now gone in, so the usefulness of actually being out here on location has gone. But I, I do like and I do recommend that as much as you can that you get your inspiration from real life and uh, that means often coming outdoors and sometimes when it's cold if you like to do snow like I do. But I've got enough now so I'm going back into the studio and I will work on this one some more as well and draw out some of the lessons which I think we can all learn from how to do snow in the sun against the sun. What a difference a day makes. I'm back here at the same spot at Byron's Pool near Cambridge that I was exactly 24 hours ago and the the weather has changed. There's been a very hard hoarfrost overnight and uh, it's uh, very cold today, but absolutely beautiful with the hoarfrost coming off the trees and a little bit of colour here and there. It's very different and I want to do a little bit more work against the light. This scene that you see behind me here with the, the wood and the shadows in the sun in the foreground like to just to develop that a little bit more if I can. As I say, this is called Byron's Pool. It's named after Lord Byron, the uh, famous Victorian poet, who apparently when he was a university student at, Man at Cambridge, used to come down here with his mates for midnight swims. <laughs> it wouldn't have been at this time of the year for sure, but it's a, it's a lovely place. So I'm going to do a little bit more here and uh, I'll still be finishing off the whole thing when I get back into the studio later. I'm going to lighten up these, <coughs> these snow highlights here a little bit. Partly because I'm going to sort of adapt to the time of the day it is now, which is earlier in the day and quite a bit brighter. I'm going to keep some of the the yellowy tinge but just lighter that's all. And the, some of these footsteps that we've got here are quite dark. So I'll be putting those in as well in in a moment. And we've got little flicks of light here and there. some footsteps of some little animal here. <clears throat> so you'll see in a minute I'm going to put some darker shadow where these little footsteps, these little tracks are. do a little bit more on the sky here.
little bits of blue. But changing it to to pale yellow. Where it's just coming through the trees. In the afternoon light. So to do these darker bits on the, the shadow side of these footsteps, I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin and crimson, and some burnt sienna. I don't want too much burnt sienna, I want it to be quite purpley. This hoarfrost is coming off the trees and getting onto my palette here. <laughs> Good job I'm painting in oils, not watercolour. So these areas here are bright areas just you know just hitting the the level snow whereas here these are indentations in the ground some bare twigs over here. Let's put a little bit more dark around the bottom of them. Through these trees can see some some trees in the background and they are lighter and a bit more blue to them. We'll keep them fairly dark though still. going round the shapes of the tree trunks. Now I want a few more thin branches up here for which I've got my rigger which is a very thin brush with quite long hairs on it. And some of these branches, these little twigs here, we give those a little bit more detail. There we go, that's enough. And there are some that are just sort of lying across the ground here. I'm going to do them across some of the light patches. They're dark at the moment, but later on I'm going to... Just where they catch the light, where the twigs and branches catch the light, I'm going to do a little bit of... I'll make those a little bit lighter. 
Now there's lots of little twigs just coming through through the through the snow in different places. Almost like stubble really. Some some of them are just on these light patches here. And where they do, I'll put just a little bit of shadow in for them with a little bit of purpley blue like here. And here. And where these lie across this sunny patch, some little bit there. But now I want to lighten up these branches a little bit. So I'll mix up a little bit of yellow, a little bit of Alazar and Crimson. That'll do fine now. I want a few more branches. This time I'll go paler. Up here in the background. enough really. in the studio now cozy and warm got all my painting gear to hand and now I want to finish off this oil painting which is 12 inches by 12 inches and which I started a little while ago out of Byron's pool now actually I got further with this on location because as you remember I went back on a second day the weather was so fantastic and I was able to do quite a bit more on location but there are still some things I'd like to finish and to show you now with some little details and tips which I think you'll find useful when doing snow scenes. First of all I'm going to fill in these little gaps here around the edge. I'm not going to show those on camera it's a fairly routine job. The second thing I want to do is to bring a little bit more life into these areas here. I want a little bit more um, lightness coming through. I'm going to lighten up the sky here so that it tells the story of why I've got these strong lit areas coming through onto the snow in the foreground here. I want to make that a little bit more explicit. But as far as the details of the grasses are concerned, I think I'm reasonably happy with that side of it. Then another thing I would like to do is to put in or do a little bit more about these animal footsteps that are leading off here. And I'm going to show you separately what you need to be bearing in mind when you do this sort of thing to get it right. And it's a little bit different when you are facing towards the light, facing towards the sun here, and the light is coming right towards you, compared with if you were having the sun behind you in the 
previous demonstration that I showed, where the lighting on indentations in the snow are really quite different. And the final thing that I'd like to show you how to do is how to put the snow in. On the earlier, um, when I say the snow, I mean the snow actually falling from the sky. You'll remember from the earlier video, there was some snow, well it was hoarfrost actually, but it was, it, it's good enough to call it snow I think. It was actually falling right down on me, round me, on my pallet. And I just thought, well that's a, actually quite a nice feature to actually put into the, the picture. And since a lot of it is dark and in shadow, pale spots of snow will show up quite well. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is finish off these little corners and then I'll come back to you with some work on these trees in the deep shadow on the wood. I've painted up to the corners here and filled in the gaps but something else I'm doing whilst I'm, I'm in this area is adding some lighter shadow snow colour to the foreground and the reason for doing this is is twofold one is I want to bring a little bit of variety and texture into the snow anyway and secondly because the snow up here is quite dark because it is in the shadow of the wood that's just above it just out of sight from what you're seeing now but it does affect the colour of the snow here which is darker as a consequence so I'm making this foreground snow lighter in response to this darker area so that it does look lighter But I'm not going to rigidly fill. You can see I'm doing almost like a little patchwork quilt. And that's because there's texture in this snow. And by doing patching it a little bit, really at random, I'm going to get these subtle marks that tell you that the snow is just not like a a flat layer, it's got bumps and hollows in it. Now it's time to do a little bit of work in these trees up here, see if I can bring them to life just a little bit. Through the back of the trees there is a field with snow on it. I've already got it here but I'm going to do a little bit more work on it. Just want it peep want it to peep through the trees here. There's a little bit of, bit of it over here as well. And there is a bush over here which is which has got light dropping onto it. It's in shadow up here. But there's an area a bit lower. This has got a very distinct yellowy tinge to it where it is catching some sunlight that's filtering through these trees. So let's just see if I can catch that there. Perhaps a little paler. I'm using cadmium lemon 
cadmium yellow, I should say, and white. And then up here at the very height, top end of the picture, lemon yellow again. But nearly all white. where the sun is coming through these trees. Further away from the light source, it becomes a pale blue. Have a touch there. I think that blue is probably a little bit too dark. So I've added some more white to it. And a little bit more sky up in this corner here. Now there is sky down here as well, poking through the trees, but as it comes towards the horizon, there's a little bit more yellow in it. Don't want to overdo it though. This is a little dark here. I want that to recede a little bit further into the distance. I want to get depth, really. And making it a little bit lighter. We'll throw it a little bit further into the distance. Okay, that's better. This is thinning out the trees, if you like. I can see this, this field in the background here. Beth, I could. Now, I want this shadow area of this, this bush here.
That's a fairly dark shadow area caught by the hoarfrost. But there are some deep shadows as well, so I'll mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt umber and just knock in some patches. Used to be a little bit brown here. That's better. The trees behind this bush, of course, are very dark. So if I just punch in a few things like that, little patches like that, that's reading the, the trees behind them, behind this bush. Still working on this tree area, there are a number of branches which are clad with frost and I just want to touch in just a few of these. So I'm using a rigger brush with some very pale blue on it. I don't want this area of little branches and bushes here, I don't want them to be uniformly the same. So I'm changing the colour a little bit as I, as I do some stuff here. Now I want a little bit of interest on the, the surface of the ground inside this wood. So I'm just bringing some dark patches there, interspersed with a, a few bits that are lighter just towards the edge of the wood. These trees in the background Although most of them in the, in the back there are in deep shadow, they do have some colour to them. They've got a lot of ivy growing up them, so I need a little bit more green. I'm just using a test piece here. What I don't want this green to be is too, too light. I've got to keep all this area in the background in the shadow. We're just going to pull a little bit of this green forward. particularly on some of the tree trunks and the branches. It's a very dark green. Don't want it to compete with the overall colour composition. But that is really has improved it. Because now I'm seeing some deep colours in here. They're dark but they're still really contributing. Shadow is never just plain shadow. It's a bit like snow. Snow is not just a plain white or even a pale, a plain pale purple or bluey colour. 
there's always lots of variation in it and the same here you don't have to do too much variation but if there's none then the painting will look very flat well I think I'm almost at the point where I need to take another break and stand back I think you always have to do this frequently just need a little bit of something here little fine branches where I put in branches like this I, I put them in positions where they'll count the most so I'm this is I've got really dark brown here so I'm going to put them over lighter areas so that you can see them it's called counterpoint there in that background area here another branch doing doing that got to make sure that these tree trunks if they're in this wood the trunk has to come down into the shadow area here otherwise it'll look as if it belongs in the background they're details but it does make a big difference to whether this wood area looks convincing alright definitely time for a break texture in the surface of snow is really important and what I'd like to show you here is the effect of let's say footprints in the snow and going into the distance a little bit here and let's take the scenario where the Sun is in front of you coming towards you so here are some footsteps and I'm going to do a sort of cross-section through the imprint in the snow. Let's see what happens here. The, the light is coming towards you and since it's winter time the Sun is going to be quite low. Let's just pretend the Sun is... this is a cross-section here, okay? And the Sun is coming in this direction here. Now on the shadow side let's just put in a quite dark area of shadow. This is this area here it's going to be shadowed because the Sun is coming from this direction so the front of the footprint is quite heavily in shadow the bottom of the indentation will be a little bit darker than the surface of the snow out here. So let's put that in. The surrounding snow here I've put as grey because particularly when the sun is coming towards you it will appear, it won't appear white, it's quite a lot darker but the the bottom of the indentation in the ground here is nonetheless a little bit darker because it's lower down it's a depression in the snow let's put the darker bit at the front here as well but what I think brings these footprints to life is the fact that the Sun is going to strike this edge this lip here quite strongly and give a little edge which you will see if your eye is here looking at the scene 
you will see this edge here. So I'm going to put in just a thin lip of light just on this front edge. And that's what's going to bring the indentations in the ground to life a little bit. So there you have your footprints going away from you in the snow. All right, now's the time to put into practice um, how I'm going to do these footprints of uh, whether it's people or animals, I'm not sure, a mixture of both. So the light is coming towards me, which means that the this part of the hollow will be darker because it's in deeper shadow and the front edge like this one here is going to catch the light. And I've got to make sure that it is going to this light is going to be lighter than this sunlight falling on the snow here because that is falling on flat snow whereas this is catching the edge of something which is pointing towards the sun a little bit so it should be just a little bit lighter what that means I, I've got to use what is virtually white and I'm just going to catch the front end here it really doesn't take a lot does it but it is enough to give a little front edge to some of these hollows. And I'm going to add in just a few little flecks here and there. because you just would in snow, you just get these variations. I've already done some earlier on, but now just a few more. Conversely, the rear side of the hollow is in shadow, so I'm just going to strengthen those just a wee bit. A few little touches of a bluey purple. And somewhere in the middle of the hollow, is somewhere between the two. The, 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 the back side of these hollows are almost vertical, where the footprint went in. But the bottom of the hole is a little bit lighter. Hope you can see that. I think that little bit of a lighter patch at the bottom of the hole has made all the difference. Hope you agree. So let me just add a few little touches of that darker, slightly darker purple to some of these small variations where they're lighter. There we go. We're almost finished now but there's one small tweak that I want to add to this painting and it's a technique which I'll, I think you'll find useful. It's uh, a splatter technique to produce the uh, flakes of snow in the air that I want to have on the surface of the painting here. I don't want to overdo it too much because there is there's a fair amount of detail here, particularly in the background by the wood. So the, the, the flakes have got to be enough to be noticeable, but I don't want them to, to dominate the whole scene. And the splatter technique is essentially putting some paint onto a paintbrush, knocking the paintbrush with a, 
something else that's solid like another paintbrush and it splatters onto the surface. Now it's a, more commonly done with watercolours but you can do it with oils or acrylics as well. It's just a matter of thinning the paint down sufficiently so that it will just flick off your paintbrush onto the painting. Now I do not want, this is not going to be light rain, I want individual little blobs of snow. Now you could get a paintbrush and literally dab them in one by one but I think that's going to, going to look, it's not going to look right. I would rather do something that's got a, a, a slight uh, feel of spontaneity about it, almost like chance, happenstance, the way it goes on the paper. So for that and to show you how we do this, we're going to get down here, we're going to have to get down on the floor here because when I flick this paint off the brush it's going to fall downwards onto the painting. So the painting is going to go onto the floor. Okay, for this to work I need some really fluid paint and I want to use some pale blue for snow that's falling in the background a little bit purple to it I think it needs to be lighter and I want it to be really runny so I'm just going to add turps to it maybe a bit more now that's going to be some snow which I'm going to put into this sort of against the trees here snow that's a little bit further away but the snow that's falling that's closer to me is going to be closer to being white so I think I need a little bit more white. So this is titanium white. Clean the brush a bit. Okay, I'm going to have this just white. And it's got to be really quite loose. When I finish this procedure, the paint that's going to be on the canvas will be like little globules. And there's a danger that if I pick the painting up from the horizontal and put it on an easel or something, <laughs> some of these little marks might actually run. So I'm, once I've done this, I'm going to be careful to lift it from the floor in a horizontal position and leave it like that for a couple of days. Alright, that's the preparation. Now, for the smaller snow in the background, I'm going to use that brush. And for the larger snow in the foreground, I'm going to use this larger brush which has got sort of quite a floppy set of hairs to it. Alright, we're ready. Now when I flick these on I mustn't hold the brush too close to the canvas otherwise when the paint flicks off it'll form a tight little pattern. You've got to be reasonably high up to let it spread out a little bit. It does mean you're, you're going to get some on the floor as well. But that will be cleared up later. Now I'm ready. So I'm just going to have a little practice here on this palette with the, the bluier one. I'm going to use the, the back end of another brush to tap this and to see, well that's not bad. That's fine. So we lift onto here and 
and tap. And come back and do some more. I think that's enough. And now with a bigger brush. Over this area here. Maybe just a little practice. There we go, nice big. Nice big flakes of snow. That, I think, is enough. A bit more height is good. That's it. Done.